Johnny Dollar. Well, hiya, Johnny. Hiya, boy. Well, I'm fine. Who's Johnny, this? You've been out here to sunny Southern California lately? No, as a matter of fact, sure I haven't. You out here. How's about hopping on a plane? Well, that depends. Who are you? Huh? <laughs> oh, sorry, Johnny. This is Will Burnett. Trinity Mutual Insurance. Right. And the reason we need you is a couple of fish. A couple of what? Two mammals. <laughs> Look, Willie, I haven't the least idea what you're talking about. I'm beginning to wonder if you have. Sure I have. Petey and Sue. Uh, dolphins. What happened? They are what? Dolphins? That's right. Now, don't tell me you've insured the lives of two dolphins. An important client wants it. I think we ought to, but the whole uh, fishy deal needs looking into You know what I so... think? What, Johnny? I think you're nuts. Dolphins. But as long as you're willing to pay the freight. Okay, I'll see you sometime tomorrow. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Trinity Mutual Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Followings and account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the vociferous dolphin matter. Expense account item one. At the crack of dawn the next morning, $224.43. That's for a wire to Willie Burnett, a taxi to Bradley Field, and a jet going west. Then at L.A. International, while I was picking up my luggage... Yo, Johnny, right over here. Oh, hi, Willie. Oh, pardon me, please. Excuse me, ma'am. Ah, glad to see hi, you, boy. Willie. Glad you can make it so fast. Oh? Uh, You've got a rental car all gassed up and ready for you. You can stuff that stuff in the back. All right, good enough. There we are. Huh? Well, now what? I got a client waiting for me in the office, so I can't go along with you the way I planned. Go along to where? Shelter Point, just this side of San Diego. Oh? Uh, here's a map all worked out for you. And see, right here is where Professor Dr. Eurientha Eurydice Estwell has her private ocean area. Professor who? Estwell. No, 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 those first names again. Couldn't say them again if I tried. I'll bet not. She's an eccentric, uh, nonconformist. Call her an oddball, if you like. Mm -hmm. But she once held down chairs of zoology and ichthyology at two important colleges. And like I said, she's an important client of ours. Zoology? Uh huh. And her own private oceanarium. You were serious about wanting to insure the lives of a couple of dolphins. Well, why not? I mean, if they can do what she thinks they can. Which is what? Uncurl that lip, Johnny. This <laughs> is based on scientific knowledge. But it's the wildest, the most... The most... Well, get yourself on down there and see for yourself. I think I'd better. I cut on over through Inglewood to Route 101 the freeway, and then about 40 miles later hit the Pacific Coast Highway at Capistrano Beach. There I plowed into a cold, wet fog. Real pea super. By the time I passed through the usually colorful town of La Jolla, I began to wonder if I shouldn't stop somewhere and wait for it to clear. But it was still early afternoon. Traffic wasn't too bad, so I kept on. By the time I finally found the unpaved road that cut over to Shelter Point, I wished that I had stopped. But a sudden, very short-lived breeze gave me a quick look at my destination. Down near the edge of the Pacific was a home, and leading out over the ocean was a long, wide pier with lockers lining one side of it. On the other side of the pier, rising out of the sea, was a tremendous tank. Boy, I could use a seeing-eyed dog in this fog. Sunny Southern California. Hmm? Somebody down there in the pier must have caught a glimpse of me. A very good glimpse of me. That last shot was too close for comfort. But the fog, now a solid wall again, was to my advantage. Moving without a sound, I felt my way out of the pier, and by pressing close to the lockers, I showed no silhouette. Finally, I saw the hazy outline of the marksman who was not looking my way. I waited. After what seemed like an hour of hardly daring to breathe, I jumped. All right, let me have it. Let me have that gun. Come on. Well, who are you? What are you doing out here? Wait a minute. Do you always shoot at people? Now, I ask you a question, mister. Who are you and what are you doing out here? As a matter of fact, I had come here to see a Professor Estwell. What about? My name is Johnny Dollar. But Johnny Dollar? That's right. Oh, 
Johnny, I'm so glad to see you. Well, cheers. Now, look. I, I'm Penelope Wyman. Penelope? Well, let's, let's call you Penny, hmm? <laughs> well, I like that better, You too. mind telling me why you were pulling off those shots at me? At you? Oh, but I wasn't. It must have been a ricochet. Oh, sure. Oh, really, Johnny? I was aiming at those sharks. You see them? Around the big, big tank where Aunt Yuri keeps her two dolphins? Oh, you were, hmm? Honestly. But come on, Johnny. Let's go up to the house where it's warm and we can talk. Because, well, Johnny... Yeah? Why have you come here? Is it because you're worried about Aunt Yuri, too? Should I be? Yes, Johnny. Yes. This ever happened to you? You're driving down a long highway or working late, and then monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up with no dose. No dose keeps you alert with the same safe refresher found in coffee. Yet no dose is faster, handier, more reliable, absolutely not habit forming. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. No dose. Here, Johnny, we can sit in here. After you. Hmm? Thank you. Uh, would you like a drink or something? No, no, thanks. Now, Penny, tell me, does this worry about your aunt have something to do with your standing down there on the pier with a rifle? Well, no, I, I, I told you. I'd thought of going swimming. In all this fog? Well, sure, any time. But when I, I, I saw all those sharks nosing around the dolphin tank, I... I... Uh, well, all right, no, Johnny. I did have the rifle there because of Aunt Yuri. Why? Her experiments with the dolphins. What kind of experiments? Did you ever hear one of them? Well, I've heard the funny little noises they give out. That's about all. Well, most, well, most of the sound they make is too high in pitch for the human ear. But scientists believe they communicate the same as we do with a regular language. It seems to me I read something about that recently. Well, Aunt Yuri, with all her money, hopes to prove it. Prove that the dolphins, she calls them her children. Hmm. That Petey and Sue can actually talk, that their intelligence is almost as high as ours. Well, that's a possibility, I suppose. But is that all that worries you about her? Well, no, Johnny. It's that. Well, I think that somebody's trying to stop her. How? Well, she's old, quite old, and. Well, there have been too many near accidents lately. Like the night one of the planks on the pier gave way. And just think if there'd been sharks around then. And she still insists on doing everything alone out here, in spite of the fact that she could afford all kinds of help. But she, she does it all alone, except for Carl and me. Who's Carl? Oh, Carl Petermill. He's a... Well, he, he was my fiancé. Uh, Johnny, are you... Uh, are you going to stay long? Well, I don't know. Tell me, uh, what does Carl do for your aunt? Oh, he handles the recording equipment for the funny sounds that Petey and Sue make when they, uh, talk to her, she calls it. I don't really know how it all works, Johnny, and I don't think she does either, but that's her big project. Well, do you think she's getting anywhere with it? Of course I am, young man. Carl, set those tape recordings over there in the corner. Right you are, Professor. Who are you? My name is Johnny Dollar. Well, I don't care who you are. What business have you coming in here at... Dollar? From the insurance company? That's right. Good. This is Carl Petermill, my assistant. How are you, Carl? Friend of yours, Penny? Oh, no, Carl. Mr. Dollar, I want some insurance on my children, Petey and Sue. The dolphins, you mean? I said my children. Haven't you showed him, Penelope? Haven't you let him hear them talk? Now, come along, all of you. But first, Penelope... Go in and put on a decent dress. Yes, Aunt Yuri. Come along, Mr. Dollar. Yes, ma'am. While Carl fooled around with a mess of complicated electronic equipment over at one side, we climbed onto a platform across the big tank, and the two dolphins came flipping up out of the water like a couple of playful puppy dogs demanding Come attention. On. Splashing around, squeaking like mad, then leaping high into the air, clear over the platform and down into the water on the other side. 
The thing that really stopped me was when one of them, leaping out of the water onto the platform, just lay there for a moment until the professor gave it a few pats on the head like you would a playful dog. It was amazing. And a far more personal kind of play than I'd ever seen at Marineland or any other oceanarium where they train small whales and dolphins. They really seemed to understand her. Then at her command, they quit and stayed below, swimming around. Of course, coming up for a breath of air now and then and watching us all the time. There you are. Do you see, Mr. Dollar? They are my children, completely obedient. And they love me, too. It's almost unbelievable, Professor. Well, that alone is reason enough to ensure their lives. Well, now, uh... But there's a far more important reason, Mr. Dollar. One of tremendous scientific value to the whole world. At least it will be when I've given them more training to prove my point. I'm going to show you, demonstrate to you, how they talk. Is the recording equipment ready, Carl? All set up to go, Professor. You get one of them up to the surface, and I'll handle the mic from here. Very well. Sue... Susie, come here. Come here, pet. Start the machine, Carl. Okay, we're rolling, Professor. All right, Miss Susie. Talk to me. Talk to me, dear. Come on, Sue. That's right. Talk to me. That's a good girl. Do you love me? Do you love your mother? Say, mother, 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 did you hear it, Mr. Dollar? I heard it, but I'm afraid I don't exactly understand her. Then we'll show you, won't we, Carl? Down you go, Susie. And thank you, sir. Uh, these tape recorders, Professor, how come? What's the matter with you, Mr. Dollar? Can't you see what we're doing? I'm not quite sure. It's obvious. We make a recording at ultra-high speed of sounds that are almost too high for the human ear to register properly. Yes, that must then be... Then uh... Carl puts it on another of those, those machines like he's doing now and plays it back at a very slow speed. I see. That will make it not only audible, but understandable. Understandable, hmm? Well, of course, you'll see. Already, Professor. Then go ahead, Carl, go ahead. Now, listen. Do you hear it now, Mr. Dollar? Now it's at a pitch that we can understand. Yeah, you hear that? She said, Mother. She did, hmm? Well, yes, of course she did, because I taught her to. Well, didn't you hear it? She said, Mother. Well, didn't she? Or was it something else, Professor Aswell? What? Something else? Yes. Like maybe... murder. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. Yes, people who want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes know that the one to switch to is Kent. And there's a very good reason why. Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor, refines away rough taste, for the mildest taste of all. Yes, that's your reward for smoking Kent, the cigarette that made the filter famous. So when you want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes, remember, the finer the filter, the milder the taste. And you'll decide to treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. I'm no salesman, I guess, because the minute I questioned the so-called words from her pet dolphin, those that came out of the tape recorder, the professor politely but firmly ordered me to leave. Her timing was just exactly right, for as I drove on past the house... Oh, Johnny! Johnny! Hi, Penny! Hi. 
Are you going back to L.A.? Well, uh, maybe into San Diego. You like a ride? Oh, no, thanks. But, um, well, I'm driving in, too, for some shopping. You know, um, I was thinking that I might hang my hat at the El Cortez tonight. Oh, well, that'll be, uh, right close to where I'll be. Well, if you're shopping late, Penny, you'll have to have dinner somewhere. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that, Johnny. It's a date. Good, I'll be waiting. Just holler when you're ready. After phoning Willie Burnett and reporting no sale as yet, that's item two, $1.45, I checked into the El Cortez, shaved, showered, dressed, then waited until Penny called. Then, a night on the town with that beautiful girl. Only once during dinner at Lubax did we make with any serious talk. Mmm, wonderful, Johnny. Oh, good. But I shouldn't leave her alone, even for a few hours this way. Even with Carl out there with her? Your, um, your engagement to him is really off, hmm? Yes. And I guess he hates me now because of the reason for it. Oh, I knew he hadn't had much formal education, but when I found out about the only life he really cared for... Well, Penny, let's not worry too much about him. But, Johnny, all his life he'd worked in carnival. Well, that's a pretty colorful life, oh, you know. a barker, a spieler for a freak show, two-headed snakes, that sort of thing. And that's what he hopes to do again. <laughs> let's forget about him, then, Johnny? Hmm? Do you think Aunt Yuri really has anything with those dolphins? Well, those tapes are pretty, uh, provocative. Oh, why doesn't she just relax and enjoy her money? Tell me, who gets her money when she dies? You? Yes, everything. Except for the dolphins, they'll go to. Mm -hmm. Hey. Now, you're the one who said to stop worrying. What do we do next, Johnny? You just wait till I pay this check and you'll see. Waiter. We did the nightclub route. All stops. It was one of the greatest evenings I ever had. Penny, not only clever, beautiful, charming, witty, but... Well, I was sorry when it was all over. And sometime after 4 a.m., I piled her into her car, kissed her goodnight, and watched her head on back to the beach. It was almost an hour later when... Oh, Johnny Dollar. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold everything. Hello? Johnny, please, come out here. Penny? Yes, Johnny. Well, Penny, what's the matter? What's happened? Aunt Yuri. She's dead. Penny was waiting for me at the turnoff from the highway. Oh, Johnny, I don't know what to do. And there's nobody else around. Where's Carl? I'd forgotten when I left her alone out here. Last night was a night off for her. He won't be back till six. Well, it's almost that now. Listen, when I came in... I found Aunt Yuri wasn't in her bedroom. Yes? And it wasn't a feeding time for the dolphins, but I, I looked around anyhow. No, no, don't stop at the house. Well, where is she, Penny? Down there, at the pier. In the tank with her... with her children. Her body was floating there, and the dolphins... Her children were beside her, protecting her. I rigged up a sling and brought her body up onto the platform. And I could see where she'd been struck on the head. Just then, Carl came running out onto the pier. I must say that his reaction was wholly unexpected. I knew it, Penny. I knew you'd get her sooner or later. Carl! Just a minute, Carl. Couldn't wait for her to die, could you, to get all her money? You had to help her along. So just a minute. Hit her over the head, did you? Then pushed her in. Is that what you did? Oh, Carl, you're terrible. It's true, Dollar. It's true, because of her money. Now look here, both of you. And listen... Yeah, the doctors. I can prove it. I think I can prove it. Because they'll know. They must have seen and they can talk. Dollar, they can talk. And I can understand them and they can understand me. Oh, yeah. You'll see. He rigged up the microphone again. Then after starting the ultra-high-speed tape machine, he talked to one of them. He asked that dolphin who had killed her. And when he finished, he moved the tape to the other machine. And now we'll play it back slow and we'll see, Dollar, 
We'll see. What's that? It's my voice when I asked him. So low at this speed, it's only a rumble. The high squeak of that dolphin went slow down this way. Listen. Listen. I knew it. She killed her. Oh, no. Penelope. Penelope. All right, turn it off. Carl, drive into La Jolla. Get the police. You bet I will. If it was true about Dolphin's intelligence... This might be no actual proof at all, but it was pretty damaging evidence against the girl who would inherit all of the professor's money. But from the time of the professor's first demonstration, I'd been thinking about a man who knows every electronic trick. Bob McKinney, an engineer for CBS. So the minute Carl left to get the police and the medical examiner, I pulled the tape off the machine and we left. Then, at McKinney's home, Penny and I waited four or five hours while Bob experimented with different playback speeds, with filters, equalizers, a variac, and heaven knows what all. And then, finally... Well, Johnny, I can't be sure. Yes, Bob? But if the tape recording was faked up the way you think it might have been, this should be the way the voice on it sounded originally. And it wasn't any dolphin. Go ahead, play it, Bob. Uh, no. Uh... Turn it off. Well, Penny. Carl. It was Carl. Yes. Yes, Carl faked that, like he faked all the other dolphin voices. But what? Why kill her? Weren't the dolphins and the aquarium to go to Carl? Oh, yes. Yes, they were. Well... Apparently, he was afraid that your aunt would find out about his electronic tricks. This way, he'd have his sideshow, the life that he wanted. But instead, he's booked himself a one-night stand. And its blackout is permanent. Thanks to Carl, the police and he were still there at Shelter Point waiting for us. Expense account total, including hotel and the trip home, five thirty one eighty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the calm, blue, beautiful waters of the Pacific almost hide the work of a clever team of killers. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Do you like a car with plenty of pep, a car with reserve power for safe passing? Most good drivers do, but they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular-priced Sinclair Dino Gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines, saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair Dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino Gasoline. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendricks. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Larry Robinson, Ethel Everett, Joan Laser, Bill Lipton, and Ben Yaffe. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hanna speaking.